Let's have a look at another related rates problem. In this problem, we have a six foot tall man walking with a speed of eight feet per second away from a street light that is on top of an 18 foot pole. How fast is the tip of the shadow moving along the ground when he is 100 feet from the light pole? So this is one of these classical examples of a related rates problem. If you've seen calculus before and you've done related rates problem, you undoubtedly did one involving a man walking away from a lamppost or towards a lamppost or towards a spot. This is in that genre. So we've got to get an idea of what's going on here. So we'll start by sketching a diagram. Uh, we've got a light post with a little light on top. We know that's 18 feet tall. So that's 18 feet. There's supposed to be a man that's walking away from it. So we'll draw a man walking away from the light post. And the man is six feet tall. And we're interested in the shadow. Well, if the man is over here and the light's behind the man, then the shadow is cast on the ground for the man. So sort of a shadow going on here. And we have to know, okay, where is the tip of the shadow? Well, the tip of the shadow is going to be obtained by that beam of light that just clips the top of the man's head. And that's going to give us the tip of the shadow. And so I'll just complete the rest of the diagram here. We've got this road that the man is walking along. Okay, so we've got a diagram depicting the situation. What are the quantities involved? Well, we've indicated the heights of the man in the pole. Um, we're given something about a speed. We're given the speed of eight feet per second. We're also asked for how fast is the shadow moving. So we're given a speed, okay. Speed of the man, how can we actually include that in the diagram? Well, the speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So if I want to incorporate velocity in the diagram, um, Velocity is a rate of change of position, so I'm going to need to indicate position in the diagram, the position of the man relative to some fixed point, some fixed frame of reference. Well, the only thing that seems to be moving is the man. The light post is attached to the ground, not moving in terms of what's going on in this, uh, this question. So we're going to assume then that the base of the light post is our fixed frame of reference. And in order to put velocity in the diagram, we need a quantity which represents the man's position. So I'll let m represent the man's position, the distance the man is from the light post. So that when I want to talk about the velocity of the man, I'm now talking about the derivative of m with respect to t. I also want to know something about the speed of the tip of the man's shadow. So again, the speed, that's the magnitude of the velocity, so I want to represent the velocity somehow in this diagram for the tip of the man's shadow. Well, the velocity is the rate of change of the position of the tip of the man's shadow, and again, we'll measure that from our fixed frame of reference, the base of the post, and so we'll call that S for a shadow. So now let's go ahead and list all the quantities that we're using in this problem. We've got time, uh, since we're looking at speed, so that's the rate of change of uh, position relative to time. So time is our independent variable, and its units of measure are, well, we scan through the problem and we see that there are seconds, so our units of measurement is seconds. And we have these other two quantities. We'll let m of t be the distance the man is from the light post at time t. And the units of measurement here are, well, if we scan through the problem, we see distances being measured in feet. So the units here are feet. And we'll let S of t be the distance the tip of the man's shadow is from the light post at time t. And again, its units of measure are in feet as well. So what do we know about these quantities? Well, we know that the man walks at a speed of 8 feet per second. So we know that the rate of change in the man's position relative to time, so the derivative of m with respect to t, is 8 feet per second. So the man is walking with a velocity of 8 feet per second. 
What do we want to know? So we want to know how fast the tip of the shadow is moving along the ground when he is 100 feet from the light post. So we want to know the rate of change in the quantity s. So we want to know ds by dt. In fact, we want to know it at the precise instance when the man is 100 feet from the light post. So that is when m is 100. That's what we'd like to know. OK, so we have all our quantities listed. We have what we know about our quantities. And we have what we want to know about our quantities. So we'll proceed by finding this relationship between our quantities. And to find this relationship, we'll use our diagram. So I'll just draw it again here with the relevant information. So we've got an 18-foot uh, high lamp post, a 6-foot tall man. We've got a distance here of m, a distance here to the tip of the shadow is s, and we'll just fill in some other bits of information. This will be then s minus m. That's the length of the man's shadow. So here's the geometry relating m and s. Can we come up with an algebraic description of their relationship? Well, if we look at this diagram, we see that we've got a big triangle, and we've got this little triangle at the tip of it, which have all the same angles in common. They're both right triangles. They share this angle at the tip, and they both have the same third angle. So these are similar triangles. So by similar triangles, we have that the ratio of corresponding sides must be equal. So the height of the big triangle over the base of the big triangle has to equal the height of the small triangle over the base of the small triangle. So that's that S minus M. And this means then we get, so just clearing out denominators, 18S minus 18M is equal to 6S, or 12S is equal to 18M, or S is equal to, divide both sides by 12, and we get 3 halves M. So there's our relationship between our quantities. Now we want to come up with a relationship between the rates of change. And we do this just by differentiating through the relationship between the quantities themselves. So ds by dt is equal to 3 halves dm by dt. So there's our relationship between our rates of change. And this is pretty interesting because it tells me that the rate of change in the uh, position of the shadow is directly proportional to the rate of change in the position of the man. So in other words, the shadow tip velocity is a constant multiple of the man's velocity. It doesn't depend on at what position the man is at. The speed at which the tip of the shadow is moving, the velocity at which the tip of the shadow is moving, I should say, is 3 halves the velocity of the man. So now we can substitute in the known information, and we get that ds by dt is equal to 3 halves dm by dt, but dm by dt is, well that's 8 feet per second, so this is 8. And so the result here is 12 feet per second. So one thing I want to point out here is that we wanted to substitute in the known information. The only thing that we needed to know the value of was dm by dt. We wanted to find, as we scroll back up here, we wanted to find ds by dt when m was 100. But we found already in the expression that ds by dt didn't depend on m itself, only the rate of change of m. So I didn't even have to specify that it was ds by dt when m was 100. It's ds by dt is always just 3 halves times dm by dt, no matter what position the man is at. So there's our resulting velocity. And so our concluding statement is that the tip of the man's shadow is moving with a speed of 12 feet per second away from the lamppost. OK, that's it for this example.